Welcome to chapter two, the Russian realm. So Russia is broken up into different um, realms or uh, physiographic regions. So let's look at the regions first before we start to delve into the uh, particularities of each realm. So as you see, we have the, um, the Russian plain, the Ural Mountains, West Siberian plain, the Central Siberian plateau, the Yukos uh, Basin, Basin, the Eastern Highlands, the Central Asian ranges. So let's start with the Russian plain. It's a continuation of North European lowlands. It's Russia's core area. The Ural Mountains is a north-south mountain, but it doesn't hold, hinder transportation. It's not that tall. And it divides Russia into the Russian plain to the west and Siberia to the east. And it's also where we find the Eurasian heartland, which is the center of a great land mass, a major influence on history, but there is potential vulnerability because again, the mountains are not high enough to hinder transportation, which makes it um, easy for people to come in, okay, enemies to come in. Then we have uh, the Western Siberian Plains. It's the largest unbroken lowland. Uh, rivers flow northward, like the Old River. The Central Siberian Plateau, it's east of the Yeniseek River. It's a higher relief and it's sparsely populated because most of it is, uh, it's, you know, most of it is it's hard to live there. Then you have the Yukos Basin, all right, it's moderate uh, topography and it's drained by the Lena River and the Eastern Highlands. It's a remote jumble of ranges. The Kamakachi and the Sakhalin. There's the Pacific Ring of Fire there, okay? And we have the Kamakacha Peninsula. It has volatile volcanism. The Sakhalin Island is, has a lot of earthquakes and it's also an oil and gas reserve. In the southern perimeter, we have the Central Asian Ranges. And it's a high relief and Lake Bacal. And then the Caucasus Mountains, it's a barrier and zone of conflict for Russia and its neighbors. So let's look at Russia's harsh environment, okay? The inland climate uh, is remote um, from moderating and moistening maritime influences. There's permafrost, which is mostly frozen water. And it's a high latitude ecology, tundra, and it's uh, taga. So let's see the climates of the Russian realm. Semi-arid, arid, no dry season, dry winter, dry summer, no dry season, dry winter, tundra and ice, and unclassified highlands. So it's very difficult to live there because of the weather. It's very cold. Okay, so how do people deal with that? It makes farming difficult. Seasonal temperature extremes, variable rainfall, short undependable growing season. So there's a major limit on agriculture, okay, which explains population distribution. As you see, uh, most of uh, the Russian uh, round population is to the west, okay? And we can see that a little better there. So let's compare climate and population, okay? You, I want you to look at this and try to determine why most of Russia's population is in the west. Okay, you have to look at the climate there to determine why most of the um, most of uh, Russians' population is to the west. Let's look at the climate to determine why Russians' population, most of it is to the west. So I'll give you some minutes to look at that and come to a conclusion. <laughs> 